The four most dangerous words in the English language are as follows. This time it's different. And that was said by John Templeton, a man whose name can be found in one of our core dividend growth stocks, Franklin Templeton. Now, this gentleman was a successful value investor who also said that the time of maximum optimism is the best time to sell a stock. And that brings us to the topic of NVIDIA and their underlying technology that's driving their share price performance, which is generative AI. And here you can see Gartner's hype cycle, which is surprisingly consistent over time when it comes to hyped technologies. And you can see that generative AI is cresting the peak of inflated expectations, which means soon we should see it start falling towards the trough of disillusionment. And that, of course, is when uh, the hype subsides and the stock prices of AI stocks that are uh, being hyped at the moment come back down to the mean. So analysts are not exempt from this optimism. And our recent piece that proposed NVIDIA may not be overvalued also benchmarks NVIDIA against a market which could also be overheated due to the promise of AI. Now, when we look at NVIDIA's future, we can safely assume that AI hype will subside. In other words, this time it's not different. And if we're looking for maximum optimism, perhaps we can point to some of the shite that's being passed for generative AI solutions. I'm looking at Copilot on my laptop right now, and yesterday I tried to ask it a simple question about Microsoft's annual revenues, and it couldn't even provide all the data, and what data it did provide was wrong, and that's the company that produced the solution. So um, investors throwing money at anything generative AI sight unseen is also another characteristic of maximum optimism. And there's a lot of excessive AI hype right now in many publicly traded stocks. So the question we wanted to answer today is what does NVIDIA look like if data center dries up? So when we first invested in NVIDIA, data center revenues were somewhere around 7% of total revenues for the company. And now they're around 83%. So this was a piece that we wrote in March of last year, and it said, NVIDIA's growth is stalling, why we're not worried. And you can see here on the chart that blue lines are the data points we had. The black line was NVIDIA's estimate. And then we simply took that growth and pushed it forward for three more quarters. And we said that generative AI should start coming to the rescue with outsized data center revenue growth carrying the entire company on its back. That's where we're at today. And we said that if we don't see that strong data center growth by the end of 2023, then Mr. Jensen's vision of AI factories will be called into question. And it, in fact, was realized. And um, we have to be uh, careful not to get too carried away. But here's what he said about AI factories before this boom. He said data comes in and the data center does exactly one thing. It cranks on that data and it produces an updated model. So where raw material comes in and something refined or improved comes out, that's called a factory. And he expects to see AI factories all over the world. So uh, every firm out there moves from producing goods to producing intelligence. And that may well be the case. But again, we have to remember the Gartner's uh, hype cycle and where NVIDIA might sit with that. So we want to think of the next Microsoft. You hear a lot of people say that, right? What's the next Microsoft? At some point in time, people were looking for the next Cisco or the next IBM or the next BlackBerry or Nokia, and they're not anymore. So what exactly has changed there? Well, Microsoft managed to collect a portfolio of growth businesses, both organically and through M&A. And you can see that here on this slide, how they break those down. And these various franchise prizes have helped them become one of the largest tech companies today. Now, um, before I get into talking about NVIDIA, I just wanted to say that we really value your attention, which is why we don't run ads on any of our videos. That's because you'll have monkeys like this trying to sell you rubbish and they'll associate themselves to our brand and there's nothing that we can do about it. So what we have to support our business are subscription plans, which are uh, quite valuable and priced well below competing offerings so that everyone can have access to the tools and insights we provide that help them become better investors. I was surprised just how many uh, subscriptions we had just when I mentioned this in one of my last videos. So I just want to say this time, uh, muchas gracias to all the people who signed up to support our work. It's much appreciated. So let's talk about NVIDIA's five business segments. Now, this chart was taken from one of our older pieces on, in, on NVIDIA and shows 
how data center moved from 7% to 27. You see it's crowding out their other segments. So what are their other segments? Well, there's five total. Of course, we know data center. There's gaming, and that benefited a lot from crypto. Then you have ProViz. And the question there, what exactly is this? We'll touch on that. Then you have auto, that's intuitive, but lots of formidable competition there, which we've covered in past pieces. And then you have OEM IP, which is their smallest segment. So let's start with looking at revenues broken down by segments. And these charts that we're going to be using here uh, reflect 20 data points. Just ignore the labels because NVIDIA uses fiscal and this just uses calendar dates. I know the founder over there, Joe Kelly, and... Uh, uh, he's a solid guy producing a really interesting solution that we've used for this particular video. And um, what you can see here is that for Q1 2024, data center revenues were 60%, gaming 31%, and then it drops off a cliff there. Okay, then you have auto, vis visualization, and OEM. Then we look at uh, the latest quarter, we see data center at 83 gaming at 13, and the rest are largely insignificant. So um, what we can then do is subtract the other segments, and we get to this chart here with the dark blue bars. Now, what we can do next is say, all right, we see what data center looks like. Now let's remove all segments except gaming. So we can see the growth of gaming. Now, in, well, I think a couple pieces ago we did on NVIDIA, we said that during the crypto boom, NVIDIA had developed hardware specifically for mining and that they were taking a hit when that demand for the hardware dropped off. And in 2022, they saw what they referred to as a channel inventory correction, which was basically lower demand for their gaming hardware for crypto. And that put downwards pressure on average selling prices, which made gamers very happy yeah! <laughs> because uh, crypto was eating up all that equipment. So what's the new normal here? Uh, is the re recent resurgence in crypto uh, mean that uh, there, this segment is going to return to new highs? I don't know, but you can see that it seems to have flatlined last quarter. So this would be the first place you would look to see if uh, perhaps this is a rising star. And aside from a resurgence in crypto, it's hard to see. And of course, the growth of gaming of where this segment grows. Now that brings us to the other segments. And what's interesting to see here is I've simply taken that gaming segment and I've overlaid on top of it on the top chart here, professional visualization. So look, and we'll call it ProVis, look how small ProVis is compared to gaming. So their third largest segment is quite small. Then the bottom chart there, we simply removed gaming. Now we can look at the growth trend for ProVis. Look at how it pretty much mimics gaming. That's very suspicious, and it's not a good thing because there are no diversification effects for these two segments. And when we look at how NVIDIA describes ProVis, you see here they talk about you know, RTX graphics cards and virtual GPU, GPU rendering, rendering omniverse enterprise, these vague terms. The correlation it has with gaming means they're simply carving out part of the gaming segment and calling it something different. Perhaps there's different applications of the same hardware. And that brings us then to auto, which here what we've done is we've now taken ProVis and we've overlaid auto on top of that. So you can see how the two compare. So over time, it appears that auto is becoming more significant of the two. And what we can then do is remove ProVis and look at the bottom chart there. That's auto. A couple interesting things. First of all, it's definitely not correlated with gaming and ProVis. Uh, and secondly, you could see that growth for this segment has flatlined. And this came up in our recent piece on autonomy and how we might play that in the context of mobile eye hardware and some of the players that are coming up to challenge mobile eye. Now, when we look at the uh, last segment here, it's really too small to care. So we've overlaid OEM and other on top of the last segment that we just looked at and what you can see here is that um, there was a blip, it appears. And I know these labels are hard to read. I'm going to have to send a note to those folks and tell them to make these stand out more. But there's a blip here that uh, may be worth investigating if you're interested in this segment. But it really, as I said, is too small to care. So what are the takeaways so far? First of all, there's nothing too exciting happening outside of data center. The two biggest segments appear highly correlated. And that what they need to do is take their cash cow and change that. And of course, that 
leads us to the BCG matrix, something they teach you in B school. And the idea here is that right now GPUs are stars. That means they have a high growth rate and high market share. What happens? Well, eventually they have low growth rate and high market share. Then they become a cash cow. And then you're supposed to take all that money and funnel it into question marks. These are low market share, high growth rate. Do we see any question marks in the segments that we just looked at? I don't think so. I didn't see any. Where are the question marks for NVIDIA? And what that brings us to is what they might do with their free cash flow. So back in 2022, we said the biggest unknown is what NVIDIA plans to do with their $10 billion in net cash and growing now that the ARM acquisition has fallen through. Well, here you can see a chart of free cash flows, and they had $11.5 billion in free cash flow last quarter. What did they do with it? Well, we can look at the cash flow statement here, and uh, the first thing we can notice is that they purchased marketable securities. So what that means is look on the lower right here. You see that table? It has cash and cash equivalents of $7.28 billion. Then they have other short-term investments. They simply added to that. Then you sum those two and you get cash and cash equivalents. So be careful when you look at a cash flow statement when they say cash and cash equivalents at the end of the period that, in fact, you know, of course, this is all accounting verbiage. In fact, you're looking at the right thing, which is they have more or less cash and equivalents of $26 billion. Now you can see if we go down the cash flow statement, okay, they had 11.5. They purchased securities. Essentially, that's just cash, right? They're keeping that in cash. Uh, Payments related to repurchases of common stock. And that points to this Reuters article in the summer that said NVIDIA's $25 billion buyback, a head scratcher for some shareholders. Indeed it is. As Buffett said, you want share buybacks to happen when there's actual value to be had, not when your share price is going through the roof. Not a good idea. And just because you have all this excess cash doesn't mean you need to spend it on overpriced shares. And of course, if shares go to the moon again, then... Uh, uh, they'll look like geniuses. But the point is that um, buying back shares perhaps isn't the best use of their cash, and maybe they should look at acquiring some growth. So this was an interesting article I came across. It says uh, from the register, NVIDIA outlines subscription-fueled journey to $1 trillion in revenues. Okay, a, a bit of a, a hyperbole there. But you could see here, this was from May of 2022, so well before the, the real hype started. And it says why NVIDIA sees a future in software and services, recurring revenue. And their CFO says, now we're entering into a new phase, a new phase that we're thinking about software and a business model for software to sell separately. Very interesting, right? That's one of the biggest criticisms we have of hardware companies is that they don't have something to rely on when hardware demand dries up. Look at SolarEdge. So various sources estimate NVIDIA's a run rate for software at the moment at around $1 billion. So that's 1.6% of fiscal 2024 revenues. Very insignificant. But what NVIDIA could do here to accelerate that subscription fuel journey is acquire some SaaS companies. So is this time different? Well, you know, there's a, one premise we laid out in a, in a recent piece about how, you know, AGI may lead to uh, the demand for uh, GPUs rising as quick as possible, it may start emailing Jensen Huang and uh, start corralling the world's resources in that pursuit. And then people that don't fall in line with that, well, another pandemic will hit and only the shareholders will survive that and they'll eventually become filthy rich. And of course, the best stories combine doom and gloom with a small set of astute investors who foresaw the opportunity and capitalized on it. And um, it's hard to believe, as we said, that this time is different. So our take on NVIDIA is this. It's our largest position for a very long time. Uh, we've trimmed this tree and will continue to, and data center growth is eventually going to lag or drop off. And when that happens, the bottom will fall out of shares. This is why the company needs to have a plan for their cash. Now, that AI factory story is compelling but NVIDIA doesn't appear well positioned to be the next Microsoft right now. We've always wondered what their backup plan was if the ARM acquisition fell through as it did. Um, the trough of disillusionment, which we'll eventually reach, will be a new benchmark for their future growth. Uh, where is that growth going to come from? Well, it seems like acquisitions, hopefully software acquisitions. So um, is NVIDIA fairly valued right now? Well, we really dug into that question in this piece. I'll leave you with next. Uh, please make sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.